It's not crazy to think that Auburn could land five five stars. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Happy Charlie Tuesday to all who celebrate. We are joined by Auburn message board legend, the Charlie Five. You and I were talking on the phone earlier today. And we were dreaming for a little bit. And, and that's what we're going <laughs> to do today. We're going to bug. We're going to dream. Because there is a clear path to Auburn getting five five stars in this yep. 2025 class. Charlie Five. Yeah. I, I don't know if you remember last year, we had a similar conversation around the 4th of July. And my prediction was four four stars. And at the time, Auburn was about to flip Perry Thompson uh, Demarcus Riddick, and then you obviously had Cam Coleman. And there was a couple of more that I thought we had a really good shot at. We yeah. Technically, we only ended up with one, uh, and a lot of that's because some of the rankings changed. But as of right now, I think right. there's a very, very clear path that Auburn could land five five stars. And, you know, a little bit of it is you got to do what you're supposed to do when you're looking at recruiting rankings. You got to pick the site that has the highest ranking, and that's what you go with, even if it's from player to player. That's how you do this. Uh, yeah, sometimes think, uh, we're going to look at on threes rankings. Sometimes yeah. we're going to look at two, four, sevens. But that's fine. It's our show. We can do what we want. <laughs> Absolutely. And it counts. A five-star is a five-star. It counts. One, so, uh, yeah, 100%. I think there's a path. 100%. So um, the guy, I'm, I don't know. I'm excited about all of them. But let's start with the highest rated one, Naeem Offord um, yes. from, from Parker uh, up in Birmingham. Consensus five star across the board. Doesn't matter which rankings you look at with Offer, yep. but I think it was Cole Pinkston that said it. But Hugh Freeze goes over to some of the media that was there this weekend, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, "Look, you can put this in your story. Hugh Freeze isn't missing this kid." And to me, Offer seemed to say some things like, "Hey, they keep telling me I'm number one on my board. Nobody else is telling me that." And my question is like, really? Nobody else is telling you you're the number one player on their board? That's a little interesting, but that's fine, whatever. Um, but obviously, if if he came here, he would be the highest rated corner to ever sign with Auburn. And we've had some pretty good corners. I love talking about corners. Um, if Auburn landed Naeem offered, it would be, I mean, it would be monumental. And of course, he's committed currently to Ohio State. Uh, a couple of interesting things about him so far. So the a funny thing, I talked about this on my show yesterday, Ohio State, their boards, they basically brag over the fact that, and, and they did it right before this weekend, Naeem never takes, even if he goes on visits, he never wears the other team's stuff. He never takes pictures in, in, a, in another school's hat or anything like that. It's, and if you look at his Instagram up until this past weekend, there's nothing but either his high school or Ohio State stuff. And he goes for on a visit this weekend. And I'm not saying he won't do this anywhere else, but he goes on a visit this weekend. He's in the all-white Stormtrooper uniforms, Auburn everything, Auburn sweatshirts with Hugh Freeze. Stays later. He was supposed to only come. You know, he ended up staying a little bit longer uh, th through the end of the day on Sunday, even through the camp, the hangout. So, I don't know, man. Something's brewing. And for Hugh, how cool is that statement? Like, if, of all the past coaches we've had, nobody will even come close to having that kind of confidence uh, with an in-state five-star, much less, you know, a five-star corner from Birmingham. And he just straight up said, hey, put this in your story. I'll give you something you can put in the story. Hugh Freeze ain't missing on this kid. That how, got me uh, I mean, you, you got to get him now. You got to get him now. <laughs> he said or, so. <laughs> I mean – so yeah. he must feel pretty good about it for uh, for him to go out and say that um, because you know that's going to look terrible if he doesn't oh, sure. get him right. So I mean he oh, knows yeah. that, but man, you, you may have to how... get you may have to get no other five star but him. <laughs> you may have to do whatever you at like just uh -huh. sacrifice the whole class now to get him. But you still got to get. If him, you're going to so. get one, that's that's a good one to get for sure. For sure. Yeah, it, but if he does pull it off, I mean, can you imagine? Just like the swag and the mm. prestige and like the memes that Auburn Twitter is just going to eat up and create if um, if that happens. So Naeem offered is the first 
of um, the five or six five stars that Auburn has a legit shot for. Because yeah. it, once again, like I just don't think Q Freeze would put himself in that situation if he didn't have a really solid um, idea uh, of where he's going to go. So worth noting for sure. The second is Caleb Cunningham. And he is a five-star according to 247. He's a four-star everywhere else. But in the on three industry rating, he is a five-star. So to me, it's down to Auburn and Mississippi State is what it seems like. And to me, Charlie Five is like, yeah, you you like that. If it's if it's yeah. Auburn or Mississippi State, um, new regime over there in Starkville versus what Hugh Freeze has cooking over here, uh, Caleb Cunningham. I think uh, I think he's going to end up at Auburn, and for him to come out and say, "Hey, Auburn's number one now," I think it's pretty telling. Yes, yeah, so some people try to downplay that and say, "Oh, he says this everywhere he goes," and he does say a lot of positive things when he visits places, but never has he come out and say, "I have a leader." And and, and he straight up said it, not in front, not in a closet, not like in a back room. He said it to a wall full of reporters. So clearly we made a huge impact. You got Derek Nix, who's been recruiting this kid since he was in ninth grade. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine? I love I want to take your take your saying. Can you imagine Caleb Cunningham and Naheem Alford one on one making each other better? Iron oh. sharpening iron all oh. off season. I mean, to me, those two guys, you if I'm them, I'm looking at this like, man. I know you're one of the best. I know I'm one of the best. Imagine, even though we're on the opposite side of the ball, how good we can make each other. I, I mean, I think it's a great selling point, and don't think I, I don't doubt any at any point in time that Hugh Freeze has not mentioned that or is not bringing that up every chance he can get. I love that uh, Derek Nix, Auburn's new OC, is tied to this recruitment because what did we hear from Ole Miss folks when he came over? He here? can't recruit. He, he, he's oh, not he, a good he gave up that. Uh, you know, he gave up recruiting forever ago. Like okay, hold on. Derek Nix may on. be my Derek Nix may be my favorite coach at Auburn. His, his favorite assistant coach at Auburn, maybe of all time. I mean, the guy is just in every single recruitment. It seems like sharp, great representative of Auburn. Love the dude. I'm just I'm obsessed with him already. Uh, n- not an assistant coach, but I'm asked a question. Who do you love more, Derek Nix or Kenyatta Watson? Oh, that's tough. That's <laughs> tough. <laughs> I can't give up on my boy Kenyatta because he's sure. in the mix. Everybody talks about, you know who Naheem Alford spent the whole day with on Sunday before the before the camp? Uh, Kenyatta Watson. So he he's wearing the uniform around Kenyatta Watson. Mm-hmm. He's talking about, hey, could they flip you? No comment around Kenyatta Watson. And he says, hey, we'll find out what happens in December Whew. around Kenyatta Watson. So That's right. I, I, I can't. They're not on the cut. They're they're different. You got an off field and an on field. I specifically said on field. I get it. Coach. No, you certainly <laughs> did. But I asked. Uh, I asked a more pointed question. I wasn't going to let you um, get out of that one. I can't so. let me skate that one. Uh, all right. There's four more guys that could end up being five stars that Auburn has a legit, a real shot to land in this 2025 class. We discuss those guys next, right here on Locked On Auburn. Charlie Five. Let me just ask you a very serious question. Mm. Hit it. Can you imagine? No. Can you imagine hiring somebody and not using LinkedIn jobs? I can't imagine why you would even attempt that. You're hearing all these five stars that we're talking about Auburn possibly landing. Hmm. Do you want a five star to work for you to help your business but get better? Hand raised. Hand raised. Yeah. I'm right there with you, friend. I'll raise two. Uh, LinkedIn jobs is how you can get the five star to come help your business grow. LinkedIn knows that small business owners are wearing so many hats and they may not have the time and resources to hire. So LinkedIn makes it easy. Makes it easy. Makes it easy, Charlie Five. Makes so, it uh, easy. So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So looking at the next five star, and I'm excited about all these guys once again. Uh, but we'll go with Andrew Baba Laloa. Is that right? Babaloa, baby. Babaloa. Babalola. Babalola. There is an extra Lola. L. There's two L's yeah. at the end. Yeah, there's two L's in this. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. Andrew Babalola. Lola. Yeah. All right. Um five star according to two four seven. So for most of these, we're gonna use two four sevens rankings because yeah. Yeah. 
They're the wow. best rankers by, by far until we get Six, to the- five, 295, a lean 300 pounds. Mm. A lean mm. 300 pounds. Offensive tackle. Auburn already has offensive tackles committed left and right, but we want more, and we want two five-star offensive tackles. Um, it seems like Auburn really likes this kid, and it seems like this kid really loves Auburn. Yeah, and and this one I don't want to say came out of nowhere because he's I think he's been to Auburn twice now. Uh, he came two weeks ago for his official visit. Couple of things. Number one, didn't know this. Got a brother who attends Tuskegee University. So love that. Got you got that. Love you got that. that in your and you got that in your back pocket. Number two, I think he has uh, some of the same lineage or same uh, I, from the same area as uh, Favor Edwin. That that signed with Auburn last year huge. made made a huge connection there on one of his visits, uh, and then you got the pathway to playing time early. You have a whole almost senior offensive line that's gone mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. this season, so he gets to come in and, and compete right away. I think it's between Auburn and Sanford. Uh, Sanford, uh, they're in the Sanford's in the ACC. Can you imagine how miserable it's going to be? to travel across the country five, six times uh, this this upcoming season. Just the whole – I understand it's got the academics and everything, uh, but then you you throw in NIL, now you got state taxes you got to deal with and, and, and everything. So Good point. There's, there's just a lot of there, – there's a lot of things, you know, that, that I feel like Auburn's got going in its favor right now. Uh, if you can get him back for a Big Cat weekend, I think that would be massive. I don't think he's committed to come back quite yet. But if you can get him back in for a visit, I think Auburn it has a really good shot. I think it's really right now Auburn and Sanford uh, or Stanford. Is it Stanford or Stanford? It's Stanford. You're meaning to say Stanford. Yeah. Stanford. Yeah. The, the Stanford. The one yeah. in California. Like the, the small the, school that the nobody school cares Birmingham. about. Birmingham. Right. <laughs> yeah. The small school nobody really cares about out in California. Right. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, I think we got a really good shot at him. Where, where, who would have thought we'd be in the talk of possibly adding two five star tackles? Uh, in, in a high school recruiting class because yeah. that's what we're talking about. That's what we're going to be talking about it, this year. It's insane. Yeah, so on three has him as the fourth highest offensive tackle. Um, yet he's a four-star, which is ridiculous. And then 247 has them as the number three offensive tackle, and they have him as a five-star. The next down on three's fifth-rated offensive tackle, Broderick Scholl, who's about to just shoot up rankings. He's about to shoot up rankings. He's a four-star right now pretty much across the board. But he's about to just be a rock. He's the number nineteen. If he's he's he may be the fourth offensive tackle on on three, but I think he's the number nineteen overall player. Yeah, uh, right. on on three's rankings from Oklahoma. I watched I watched a little bit of the, his film today, and I'm not an offensive line guy. But what I like to see out of offensive linemen are big dudes that can move and and, and they're they're long and they look athletic. It's not like a sloppy. 280 pounds. It's a very well put together uh, 280 pounds. And, and that's what he looks like. And, and he's got this you know, guy's Braden to, Smith to me. Yeah. He's got every bit. He may honestly be, he may not be quite as mean, but he may be more athletic. Let's just say that. I think he, he has a chance to be more athletic, maybe quite not as mean because Braden is just, a, he's just a beast. But he's, he's, Two years, two years in a weight room. I mean, this, this guy's kid, name's Broderick Scholl, which is a much better name. It is. He does have a very, a very good name. I think they call him Brody for shorts, which is, uh, you know, kind of cool. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's super. Yeah, cool. love it, love it. Typically, you know, that's a that's a quarterback name, but now we got an offensive tackle. He's a Brody, and a Brody. Uh, I like, I like, I think in two years, a year and a half, he could be compete. He could be your starting right tackle, and yeah. you got possibly have Babalola as your left tackle. Holy cow! I'll take it. Yeah, what a what a time. Uh, okay, and then Malik Autry, who is committed yes. to Auburn already. Um, Opelika, right here yep. in our backyard. Um, he's a five star, according to two four seven. I've always on, loved their rankings. Always best. have. On three has him as a three star. What are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? <laughs> How does that even I, make I've sense? never liked. I've never liked on three's rankings. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a two four seven guy. I know they have I'm Scholl a, as the number nineteenth player overall, but what are they doing when looking at defensive line? Come on, two four seven is a defensive line. They're they're defensive line guys. On three is the offensive line guys. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> you pick you pick the highest one, and that's what you go with. But obviously, like Malik Autry, you know, I, I saw him at a spring game last year 
and it's just like you don't have to like point out like where's Malik Autry, what number is he wearing? Like he's it's very obvious who he is, and it's still that way. But just talking to folks who watched him at spring, Brian Smith, who comes on, he's like, yeah, he's figured out how to use it. He's figured out how to use the frame. He's working on. He, you can tell he's worked on the pad level. And um, yeah, two four seven gave him that fifth star. And I just got a feeling other other folks will follow suit. So Malik Autry, can can they keep him from Florida? And I yeah. think, you know, I, I do think he's listening to Florida, but will that coaching staff be there come week six? Who knows? We don't know. He, well, he's been, he, he visits quite a pl- few places, but again, at the end of it the day. It seems like Florida is the one that has kind of the most smoke behind it though. Sure, sure. But at the end of the day, I think he's going to be, he'll be an Auburn Tiger and he has a good chance to eat, possibly hold on to that five-star ranking. Maybe some of the other sites are able to see you know see him play a little bit more and, and even bolster that rating on theirs even even more. Yep. All right, the last one is the obvious one, which he's a five yes. star everywhere except somehow on three. They just don't get five stars out, I guess. <laughs> is um is Julian Lewis, the quarterback from Carrollton, Georgia, uh committed to USC. Nobody believes it. And look, there's the, been this stuff where he's interested in Indiana and Colorado and all that. I'm not buying it. No, this dude is going to end up being Auburn's quarterback in this class. That I'm just, I just think that I just believe it in my bones, Charlie Five. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm with you a thousand percent. I don't think it's a reach. I, f- I feel like some people think that Auburn just can't sign a quarterback that's this this highly rated. Like it's just you just don't go to Auburn uh, if you're if you're this highly rated. But the thing is, when you're looking at the possible the the possibility of the guys you can play with. When you're you're going to be locked in throwing to guys like Cam Coleman for at least two seasons, Perry Thompson, maybe a Caleb Cunningham for three seasons, and then you got guys like Brody Shoal and Andrew Babalola possibly coming in to block for you. I, I mean, I can Ooh. see the allure, and then and then you see what Hugh's done with other quarterbacks when Hugh has been the one in control. Uh, he's taken a you know a lot of chicken, you know what, and made chicken salad out of it. Uh, and done really, really well, uh, you know, in his past when he's had, you know, did insert sure. quarterback when he's the yeah. guy. So, right. you know, you add Juju's ca- the caliber of player that Juju is, and and then the the buzz that he can he can build around him joining the class. I really, I don't think it's that far fetched. Before Georgia added a quarterback, I would have said it's going to be hard for Auburn to beat out Georgia for Juju. But since Georgia added Ryan Montgomery, I really it's it's Auburn USC. And and I just I, I really truly believe Auburn's going to win out in the end. I, I do too. I'm not buying the Colorado or the Indiana stuff right now. But Colorado's so. fun to think about. Like it's fun to think about I'm going to go play for Dion. I'm going to go visit Dion. I bet it'll be cool. I bet talking, hanging out with Dion will be cool, especially if you're the a five star quarterback. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's like, okay. When it really comes down to it, I got to go to Colorado. I got to go live in Boulder. <laughs> I got to go to Boulder, <laughs> win four games, and then Dion's going to bolt after the season. So I, when I really think about it, that's not really where I want to be. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think he's going to end up in Auburn's class. So we shall see. Hey, Auburn uh, may be flipping somebody soon. Very, very soon. We'll talk about that next. Right here on Locked On Auburn. Charlie Five, just quick question. <laughs> Can you imagine using any sports book other than our friends at FanDuel? I won't do it. I will not imagine it. No, can't do it. It's winner take all time in the NBA, and I think the NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a win of your own. Auburn, seven and a half wins. You, you, taking the over. Taking the over. Give me, I think give I, me eight. Let's go. Yep. Give me eight as well. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. There is so much smoke. I thought it was going to happen this weekend. I really did too. I'm actually nervous as we record this. It's going to happen. It could, after yeah. I, I'm, exactly. Any minute. Any minute. Folks, national outlets from um, multiple um, national analysts from multiple outlets yeah. um, saying Blake would be um, Ohio State commit or former commit. He decommitted, didn't he? So it won't he did. technically be a flip. But um, let's talk. Hey, let's talk about that really quick. 
What what def- how long do you have to be committed before it's not a flip anymore? I think for it to technically be a flip, you have to be committed somewhere and then mm. shift your commitment somewhere else. Okay. Is it semantics at that point? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. You I took a dude who's committed to Ohio State away from them. Yeah, we talked about there was there was a kid a couple of uh, maybe two years ago that we talked about that decommitted from Alabama and then. A, like a month later committed to Auburn and it was called a flip and everybody got kind of up in arms. I think I'll give you, I'll give you like a, I, I don't know. I'll give you like a week because kids like to get graphics and stuff like that together. So you may have actually went ahead and pledged your commitment, but you got some stuff you got to get in order before you go public. So uh, I'll give you about a week, but I, but anyway, keep going. I, di- I digress there. No, what a great point. What a great point that you brought up. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, Blake would be four star across the board. Yeah. Was committed to Ohio state. I believe will very soon be committed to Auburn. Um, yes. Corner from Baltimore, Maryland. Tough. Don't say that too much. Um, this guy can play. Yeah, he's good. The, he'll be the highest. If, if if no one commits before he commits, he'll be the highest rated player in our class. He's an absolute, absolute stud. Ohio State doesn't take bombs, okay? They don't just take random dudes off the street. This guy is a player. And and for whatever reason, it didn't work out there. And it was weird how none of our Homer like board guys, like none of the Auburn beat writers, were really even talking about this guy that much. It from a, from the standpoint of these guys are saying he's coming to Auburn. Like they're not saying he's he likes Auburn. They're saying not only is he coming to Auburn, the NIL situation is really good. And it was like Steve Wiltfong, the one of the bigger writers out there. A lot of guys from up north. Um, he's had so many predictions from not Auburn people uh, over the last since he's decommitted, yeah. and it's just been boom straight Auburn. Which kind of, I like I said, I like to keep, I like to keep, think I keep up with things, and I, I didn't even know who this kid was, and it turns out he possibly could be the highest rated player in our class, and, and maybe it happens pretty soon. I mean, what is it about Auburn's ability to take Ohio State's talented corners? Kay and Lee. Now it seems like Blake would be is going to be next. And Naeem then, uh, yeah, Naeem offered. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what's going on right now? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just think it's a uh, it's a combination of things. But, but yeah, we, we seem to have you're – not, you're not hoping that you hit on a project. Uh, you're, you're actually going out and you're finding these elite guys from the beginning, and, and then they're going to end up being players too. Hey, it goes back further. You got Jamel Dean. I think it was not Carlton Davis even an Ohio State commit at one point in time. For the sake of uh, what we're trying to push, let's say it. Let's just say it. I think he, I think it was say a, it. he was going there. He just flipped on signing day. Was actually. Carlos Rogers at Ohio State? Yes, <laughs> transfer transfer portal added him. Took him right away. <laughs> go hey, you go uh, back as far hey, as you want. Tell as old as time. Hey, you said he'd be uh, he'd be the highest rated player if uh, if if he were to go like commit right now in this class. Yes. No, you got to say. He, he would, would be. be. Oh, I've already done that joke. <laughs> I've already done that joke. One, <laughs> one. I've already done it once. I can't do it again. Oh, yes, you can. That's what we I do apologize. here. We make one joke that's barely funny. <laughs> and beat it to death. And Absolutely. we just beat it to death to where it's not funny anymore. That's actually uh, my favorite kind of jokes. Yeah, you I'll, do it so much that eventually it gets funny again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Three <laughs> weeks down the road, we'll have a would-be joke. and. You know, we'll we'll giggle and people will roll their eyes. And it'll be a watching. little forced. It'll be a little forced. It's like I'm gonna do a whole topic. Is. I'm gonna do a whole segment on Blake Woodby just so I can make the Woodby joke. Forced humor is the best humor. But then it would be funny. It would be funny at that yeah. point in time. It absolutely would be. There we go. <laughs> in the show, turn it off. <laughs> Top no, five what class a- still on the table. Say that again. Top five class. Man, I mean, if you land these guys, you're possibly looking at even like a top three class. I mean, it's mm. it's top five class feels like it's like it's definitely in reach. And and these guys, this again, you're not really reaching. You're not really no, reaching. All on of this these guy, seem almost these. likely. Yeah. At, right at this point in time, it feels like signing day were tomorrow that everyone we mentioned would more than likely be an Auburn Tiger if it was tomorrow. If everything would ended. Be. Yeah, they would be. Every single one of them. And we're not even talking about guys like that are right on the edge, like Anquan Fagans, and you know you got Eric Winter that's that's 
supposed to commit yeah. in July, I believe. Like, there's so many other guys that you, you're going to be able to add to this class. Um, Alvin Henderson, Alvin Henderson, who, yeah. who could who could easily flip. Who's a you know a, a top 150 running back. Just a lot, a lot of guys that you're you got irons in the fire with, and it's uh, it's looking good. Yeah, June's going to be fun. It would be, yeah. June, it will be actually. Ooh, <laughs> it would be. No, it will be. It will be. Somebody make everybody make would be jokes puns in the comments. Yes, in the comments, please, or on Twitter, hit us with it. Yeah, with I love it. it. I love it. How can people check out everything you've got going on? Absolutely, you can find me on Twitter at the underscore Charlie underscore five. You mm. can find me now every single day, daily, uh, at the top button podcast. Started that last week. Got re-energized. A lot of fun. It's quick. Let's go. It's, it's fast, but we get after it. Uh, we yeah. So I, for all of you that get mad at me for like, oh, I wish your show was twenty minutes longer. Here you go. There you here go. you go. There's another Auburn Daily show. There you go. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, awesome. great. Thank you so much to Lindsay and Daryl for uh um, held it down. Held down the fort. Got it you. Was, let you go get. Let you go good. get a little. Let you they go get great. a little. You got a little sun kissed on your forehead. Got my it. body's been kissed by the sun. Yes. 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 Among yes, um, never mind. Ooh. All right. <laughs> uh great. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked On Auburn.